BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. I'm your host for the show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyne Messianic Congregation. We're Jew and Gentile. Worship Yeshua the Messiah together. Following the word of God from Genesis through to the book of Revelation. Yes, Jew and Gentile need to follow the Torah. Today's show is being brought to you by none other than Beth Glean International Messianic Ministry. Where Jews and Gentiles, completed Jews... Yes, a Jew without Messiah is an incomplete Jew. Follow the Word of God, the com complete book, the complete Jewish Bible, all 66 books. And another thing that Beth Goyim is, we're 100% legalistic. You know why? Because God does not change. And he didn't say in the beginning, well, you got to eat, eat only these animals and then... And, in the New Testament, when you show with the Messiah? Yes. I didn't tell you that. Let me let you in on a secret. Lean in close to your monitor. Go like this with your ear. Yeshua, that's Jesus. His real name, Hebrew name is Yeshua. Let me tell you something. Lean in even closer. He's a Jew! Yes, he's a Jew. He's still a Jew. He didn't start the new religion. Oh, yes. And we're 100% legalistic, teaching Jew and Gentile to follow the commandments because that's the way you're going to get into heaven. You're going to be judged on the books. Let's go on to the next slide. Today's show is the Sledgehammer Show, SH228, Pearls Before Swine. Pearls Before Swine. And we're in a, and I'm joined on the line by none other than an NRA card carrying member, Mr. Rav Will McCubbins of the great state of North Carolina. And there he's got his pop gun. He's got his pop gun. He's a little weasel. His little silver Lone Ranger gun. And I'm also joined on the line by another NRA carrying card member, none other than the man with the face for radio. Rab Eduardo Mangeris, the Senderos and Tigos show. Listen to it on our WTRCRadio.com. And I'm kind of also joined on the line by another NRA member, a man who has not one but two guns, maybe more. He's hiding them in the floorboard of his car. He's hiding them in the side panel of his car. You know what? He is a messy Mexican and... He's in the, a citizen of Estados Unidos of America, Mr. Martin Sanchez. He can't carry in New York City, though. So you can shoot him when he's there. Okay. But you know what? You might get a new mayor soon because this mayor might <laughs> go to jail. He did break the law. All right. And let's start out with our scripture. As this show is different than any other show on the planet that actually you know, talks about um, social issues and things of that nature. We base everything on the Word of God, okay? And you know, there are some Christians that try to do that, but they're not legalistic. All right. So here, Messiah Yeshua says, Do not give what is holy to dogs. Roof! And do not throw your pearls before swine, for they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. We're going to be going through a show today. There are some times when... You just can't talk with people anymore. And this is what Yeshua the Messiah is saying. You know, he says, don't throw your pearls before swine. There are some times where, you know, you just get to the point where you can't talk with them. You just got to punch them in the face. You can't punch them in the face. You're supposed to be a believer. Really read your Bible, would you please? 
okay? Before you get stupid on me, look, it took me six minutes to say the word stupid, okay? Uh, <laughs> that's almost like a record for me, okay? Yeshua the Messiah says, don't throw your pearls before swine. There's some times where you just, you, you know, somebody comes at you, you got to take them out. You got to punch them in the face. You got to you gotta defend yourself. You got to, you know, do what is necessary, okay? Now, why am I saying that? I'm going to read a, a little couple of paragraphs and then bring on my uh, team here. Paraphrase is often attributed to Alexis de Tocqueville, a Frenchman who authored Democracy in America in the early 1800s. Helps to open this letter. I looked throughout America to find where her greatness originated. I looked for it in her harbors and on her shorelines in her fertile fields and boundless prairies and in her gold mines and vast world commerce. But it was not there. It was not until I went to the churches of America and heard her pulpits aflame with righteousness did I understand the secret of her success. America is great because she is good. And if, if America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. Over the last few decades, Americans have seen the destruction of the institution of marriage between man and a woman. The removal of God's word in several areas and the blatant murdering of millions of babies. This is an indictment against America. And the pulpit is, it says partially there, I think it's primarily responsible. Our silence speaks volumes. See, Beth Goyne is legalistic. You can't say that homosexuality is bad and go to church on Sunday. You can't say that homosexuality is bad and eat pork. To God, these are similar sins. And when America's pulpit, Rev. Will, stops being good, stops preaching the truth, stops living the truth. You have women pastors in the 1800s. How many women pastors did you have? In the 1800s, how many divorced reverends and pastors and even rabbis did you have? See, once you destroy the pulpit, the Tocqueville understood that you destroy America. You destroy what's coming from the pulpit. When people don't fear God, when they don't have a prophetic vision, then America suffers. What do you think about what the dog pool said? I'm going to go around the, the, to each uh, gentleman and to see what um, you know you guys think of the dog pool's uh, take on America. Grab Will? Oh, I think Alexis de Tocqueville was right on the money with that. You know, he some background on him. He had come through a violent French revolution. Their revolution was was much bloodier than ours. Uh, you know, after our revolution, we wrote a constitution and instituted goodness into the country. And he knew what it was like to live somewhere where that did not happen. After the French Revolution, they built guillotines all over the country. And the victors chopped the heads off of the losers. They didn't, they didn't become one nation. They filled those catacombs with the bodies of their enemies. So he knew the difference between a... a, a uh, a strong nation and a great nation because he had seen both and he, he looked around America and he was like that's what we were missing in Europe basically uh, is goodness just a basic goodness not necessarily any particular religious doctrine just goodwill toward one another is just the very basic. And Yeshua even said that. What's the greatest command? Love God. And the other is love your neighbor like yourself. Just a basic 
childlike sense of goodness. And honestly, the reason I think we're still a nation is although our government, the most evil scum on this planet, has risen to the top of our government and the top of our bureaucracies and alphabet agencies, I mean, they're the worst people who have ever lived on this planet. But if you talk to people on the street, even up where you guys live, uh, if you talk to people on the street, you know, there are still an awful lot of people in this country with just a basic sense of not wanting to harm other people or do other people harm. So I don't speak enough Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's my two shekels on that. Rab Ed, sorry about that. My computer was freaking out for a second there. Rab Ed, what, what do you think? I don't speak enough Spanish? No, senor. <laughs> No, I understand really. You know, when we start to look at the history and we go back, you know, as you you presenting in the 1800s when when the for real the secret of the of America's success is is what we know today is moral values and also basically the word of God when when people really fear God, when people really know who who's going to guide your life, when people wasn't afraid to stay alone. Because now either the the teenagers, the young kids, they're afraid of, of darkness. While in those days, you remember, you used to play outside with nothing. Nothing happened. Now, their mind is getting corrupt with all the video games and all those war games that the young people start to get afraid. They start to walk uh, shaking because the, everything is start to for them to come in real. So evil is coming uh, upon them. So we understand that if we don't bring God, God's word back to this country, I mean, President Trump, he's doing a good job, but what about the leaders? So he's bringing back God, but pastor, they are still hiding the truth. They they are still holding uh, the truth to the to the believers. They don't want to do it. They're, that's why we have so many uh, churches outside. And, you know, they're getting rich and rich. You know, you can see pastor with nice BMWs and, and all that, and people are still suffering. But not everything is money when, when they start to realize they have nothing. They they really don't have nothing because they don't have God inside. You know, when you you ha they have to understand the pastors don't, don't, don't show what this country needs, basically, where to form your life, how to develop your your marriage your society for for them to be able to be happy what is that what, what you said in the message i just want to be happy but that happiness has to be from basic in god's world oh, i said it. i just want to be happy yeah I, I i say with a southern accent you know i just want to be happy <laughs> you know in talking about this before i go to mr marty you know, it was very interesting when we left Mitzrayim, when we left Egypt as a people, as a mixed multitude, both Jew and Gentile. The Mishkan, the tabernacle, was in the center of the community. When you remove God from the center of the community. See, America was good up until really the end of World War II. We fought evil, but then evil took over us. Because the pulpit began to disintegrate. What do I mean by disintegrate? There was no more fire and brimstone messages. There was prosperity. People missed church. And it was no longer community-based congregations and churches. You know, where 
you know, let's say Martin owned a, a car business and, you know, I would go get a new car from Martin because Martin was in my congregation. You know, you support your own. But uh, Martin then left the congregation because he had his wife, but then he had his you know, little Chiquita on the side there. And he decided to go with the little Chiquita because, you know, she was a little Chiquita. She was a little banana. And, but then I still went to Martin. Then there was no ramifications of his action. I'm not saying that Martin's going to go with Chiquita. Okay? Anybody that had a business, you wanted to be in congregation. And you would support one another. Once God is out of the center of it, and then you go to whoever, then America ceases to be good. You know, um, then there was a movie. So you destroy the pulpit. Because as Rav Ed just said, you know, the pastors are driving BMWs. You got the one wanting a fourth or fifth airplane. You know, you got a, a pastor with the name of Preflo Dollar. You know, you got Joel Osteen getting divorced from his wife. And the Tammy Faye's and the Jim Bakers and all the other who See, once you destroy the pulpit, then you destroy the family. There was a movie in the early 70s called Looking for Mr. Goodbar. Okay, it was this woman who was sleeping around. And once you destroy the nucleus family, destroy the pulpit so people don't care about divorce. Well, you know, back in the 50s, Shh, she's divorced. Okay, once you make that a normalcy and that person is allowed to be in church or they, they can go church hopping, okay, and they go from church to church to church, as we see here, you know, well, I don't like what you preach, I'm going to go, go somewhere else. Go ahead and go against the doctrine. It's the word of God. Now, Martin, what, what do you see in this the total thing? Do you see a disintegration? Of the, the pulpit. Yeah, we definitely see that today. Uh, it, um, it reminds me the uh, a, a a saying that the people say, you know, about the, the old movies. They say the golden age. You know, the when the golden age, any made movies like before, good, you know. So. We see the decline of everything today. America is it's is going down because I mean we see we see God you know the God's word says in in, in Leviticus twenty six he says if you hear my voice and you do my mis balls my commandments and my statutes I will bring all these blessings to you you will you will you will enjoy shalom you will have shalom. You will have rain, your land is going to be so fruitful. But then he says, if you don't listen to me, you don't listen to my results and my commandments, then something big is happening. And this is what we see. And, and, and I, I really like this uh, right here because he says, he's making somebody responsible for it. He says, the church, the pulpit. And we see as, you know, uh, as we see the news every day, we see that things happening in the church. Uh, nobody stand for the for, for, for the wrong, you know, against the wrong doing. Nobody says nothing about it. So we see all, you know, as the news coming and, and, and it's increasing the decline of it. So people lose faith in church. So that's why we see... The number of the number of a uh, um, atheists, you know, the atheist people. We see more people being atheists today. We see more, you know, they don't care about the church. They they told you know, and they they're responsible. All the pastors and and and, and unfortunately even rabbis, you know, in some uh, um, nowadays, you know, they they divorce, they remarry again, no problem. So the, we see the decline, the, you know, and, it, and it's gone down and it goes down. We got to do something about it, you know. I mean, I know we cannot change the world, but we can start with one. And that's what Bitcoin doing, you know. We're doing our group, you know, try to bring people back to God and, and, and try to, 
um, not compromise the word and not be afraid to talk about it, you know? Um, because a lot of the, a lot of Christians, they're afraid to talk. They are afraid to tell a person, hey, listen, you, you gay, you gay people, you gay person, repent, you know? That's not God's will. Come back to the word. You, you committing adultery, you do fornication, you stealing. You know, somebody's got to say these things. I mean, you know, uh, we definitely see it's not coming from the pulpit because the church don't want the law. They don't keep the Shabbat, they eat pork, and and they don't want to listen sometimes. So that's what we go back to the verse that you, in the beginning, it says, don't give um, the pearls to the swine, right? It says, do not give what is holy to the dogs. See? See the language God is using. Yeshua is using dogs. They don't want to listen. But somebody's got to tell them. Somebody's had to blow the shofar to them. But uh, we see more uh, uh, things going down and, and it's going down every day. Well, you said, Martin, is, is, is profound and it also goes to the part of... Um, they don't want to talk to one another because there's really no talking. Now, it's an interesting lead into the next story. Now, you guys didn't know what the next story was, but... 1934, an American professor urged that Jews be civil to the Nazis. At the annual convention of the Central Conference of American Rabbis in June 1934, the assembled religious leaders were confronted with a question that especially resonated for Americans in the Trump era. How should we approach those who oppose us? And are we working against our interests? Should we resist with all the tools at our disposal, even to the point of sacrificing civility? Or should we instead, as the rabbis, we urge cultivate goodwill and foster friendship across ideological lines. This is 1934. This is the beginning of the Holocaust. The speaker who made this suggestion was Henry Cadbury. Cadbury. A professor of Renmo College. By hating Hitler and trying to fight back, Cadbury declares in remarks that open the convention, Jews are only increasing the severity of his policies against them. If Jews instead educate Nazis about Judaism's ideals and appeal to the German sense of justice and the German national conscience, Cadbury continued, the Nazis might well be brought around, urging Jews to adopt a live and let live posture. He said that even nonviolent resistance campaigns such as boycotts were not the way to the right the wrongs and being inflicted by the Jew on the Jewish people. Ravel, you're holding some equipment in your hand. Would you like to say some words about Mr. Cadbury's wonderful six million person murder? Well, that guy's a fool. Or he was a fool. I'm sure he's long since passed away and gone on to the reward that the Lord had prepared for him. But, hey, let me tell you what's really sad. You don't have to look too hard to find Jewish people talking like that today about the Muslim dogs. They, they appease them, they, they kiss up to them, they do everything they can to please them. And to the gays, to anybody. You don't you don't have to look too hard at all to find men calling themselves rabbis that are just totally cool with Islam. And, you know, one of the major tenets of Islam is that, you know, no Jew can live, convert to Islam or die. So it's, it's a... Must be some sort of a self-loathing self or a suicidal tendency to 
to schmooze up the people who want your death. Just think this guy that wrote that. He had to hear how Hitler came to power. The Nazis came to power promising the end of the Jewish stranglehold on the economy. Well, what does something like that mean? It means you're going to take away somebody's lawful business and property. Or either you're going to target them and make it so hard they can't do business. So that guy had already... He had already been targeted for extermination. They already been, they already lost. And he's sitting there trying to figure out some kind of political solution while war was on his doorstep. Political discourse was over, man. Uh, anybody who was trying political discourse at that time had already failed. Once the Nazis are in power, you have failed at political discourse. Get ready for war. Lots more people could have been saved had they not been so conditioned to just back away and appease. So I think there's really a special place in hell for those leaders that just told those guys, oh, just cooperate. Just like the pulpit here in America, it's... You know, there's a special place in hell for a leader that says, oh, you know, God loves Muslims. God loves gays. It's interesting, you know, because the reason we're bringing this up is the same arguments that Ravel just put forth are happening in America today. In the article that you know that we have here, and if you want the whole thing, send me an email at info at bethwilliam.org, info at bethwilliam.org, info at bethwilliam.org, and I'll send you the whole article. It was from the Jewish Times uh, JTA. Okay? There's a time, it says in Ecclesiastes, it's a time for peace, time for love, a time, there's a time for everything. When you can't have a dialogue, See, this is, you know, the, the Muslim thing and the Palestinian thing. We give, 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 and you won't recognize Israel, so why am I even talking to you? Because you don't want to budge off your position. But this is those that don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Great leaders know this, okay? And the reason we're talking about this is because we're going to bring on some other stories in a moment. Ravad, what do you think about Mr. Cadbury? Rabbi Cadbury. He decided that we just have to talk to the Nazis and give them our Jewish ideals and appeal to the German sense of justice and the German national conscience. What if the guy is holding a gun to your head? Should you appeal to his, his uh, conscience? Please don't shoot me. I don't like my brain spilled on the floor. I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. They need to become more like the Maccabees, you know. <laughs> why Why I say this? Because as Ralph Will was saying that, and these days we, we just... But at, at one point I would say that also the, the, the rabbis, you know, like a, people want to hear those things, you know. I sometimes it's it's hard to discern why because uh people are is looking for comfort and but not in the in the way that the bible will will comfort you people is looking the comfort for what they want to hear you know you know make peace you know it's like pope francis he was saying that we need to to pray with with the muslims and all that you cannot mix for you, for you, be able to have that, that comfort and all, and all that you have to follow, Torah, the God's ways. No, no matter what, you cannot be making, you know, you cannot be mixing. If it's that, the world says that is not being a believer. I don't, I don't care what the world says, you know. I, I care what God says. God says, you know, worship Him and only Him alone. 
and once when the when the rabbis and some other leaders uh because that's it's not the only case that they like that you, you know they always try to peace uh and then what happened when when they turn around what happened they they stabbing in the back you didn't do your job you didn't war you didn't fight for god's kingdom you know you have to be wise as a serpent you have to know how to and to what point you deal with with people but once when they cross the line i guess that's why the lord put borders <laughs> the, lord, the lord put boundaries you know you're not crossing this line that's it that's why we need to we need to keep learning more history you know yeah well you, you have to study the tactics of the enemy you know the jews instead should educate the nazis what if the person doesn't want to learn what if the person doesn't want to have a conversation with you what if the person has so been bred to hate and so mr marty what what do you think about this what do you think about the jews i mean this is 34 you know by 36 there were millions in the gas chamber Adolf Hitler, you're reading Mein Kampf? 1930, I was reading it uh, today. In the 30s, they were cooking, <laughs> they were cooking in the back already. They were doctrinating the kids and the younger ones. They were doctrinating in the schools. So we see the pattern again is repeated in itself. And, and um, Robert made me think of this verse when he talk about the uh what yeshua says about the uh be as be wise as the, as, the ser as the serpent and proverbs 22 says a a crafty person sees dangers and hides but the naive keep going and suffer for it i, I believe the rabbis forgot about this verse they forgot they saw they saw what was coming and they they didn't do nothing so so history is repeating itself again if they don't educate themselves in what happened. Um, we see the position of Israel today most strong, you know, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says, no more Holocaust, no more, and that's good. But we still have a lot of brothers and sisters around the world that they are assimilated into these countries still. And they don't want to listen up, you know, to the ones that we had the opportunity to talk to them, it's like talking to, you know, they don't want, they don't, they just don't want, I mean, I don't blame them because I'm kind, but not because they don't have the Torah. They, they, they are in, so into the, the, the society, into this, uh, you know, all these Michigans that is going on, as far as knowledge and careers and money, making money, everybody's thinking about money, so you know we see it's it's gonna happen again so like this professor here henry Catbury, um and make a big mistake and look what happened that six million persons died six million jews they died so we see that everything is going on again and it's repeating again so that's why we have to stand up for, for the world today not to let any of these people, you know, because I was having an argument today with this guy at work again. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Um, we were talking about the Muslim people, and we were talking about migration. And I said, listen, the, the Christians, they, you know, why nobody says nothing about the, the Christians? Being killing, uh, being you know, being murdered around the world by the Muslims. Who, nobody says nothing about it. But we got this previous president. He brought all these people here. Oh, but they're good people. He says they're good people. But yeah, I don't know that about it. That they might be good people. But we're not fighting about uh, against the people. We fight about, about an ideology. That's what we're fighting against too. Ideology. The ideology is the Quran. The Quran says killed. All those infidels, you and me and everybody else, it's an infidel before their eyes. So that is the problem. That's the problem that my neighbors, it's its a Muslim and the kids are playing with my kids. It's the ideology they put him into the kids. It's just like this guy, uh, Hitler. 
indoctrinated, indoctrination. That's why we gotta do the same thing with our own kids. We have to indoctrinate our own kids in the Torah of God to stand up for God, even if they kill us. I love when the rabbi says, if they kill me, I win. If they don't kill me, I win. So let's do the job. I mean, let's stand up for the word and and and, and, and urge all the Jewish people and, and the Christians to to take a stand against all this evil. Take a stand against the evil. Well, how do you take a stand against the evil when the pulpit's not preaching the truth? It's all about love. I just I just want to be happy. I just want to be how about making God happy? Okay? Witness, 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 then if you have to use words. Okay. You study history. You're reading Mein Kampf. I, I encourage everybody to read the playbook and then read. Wait, let me get my book. My other secular book. And then you have to read this one The Art of War. Because you have to study the tactics of the enemy because, you know, hatred lives. Okay, maybe you don't want to call it evil. There's good and bad. No, hatred lives. Okay, Henry Cadbury, Cadbury, you know, was trying to say, show them our ideals. That's if they want it. What if they don't want it? Okay, well, we're, we're going a little bit over our half hour mark here, and I'd like to take a commercial at the half hour break. So let, let me just wrap up this one little section first, and we're going to come back to it after the commercial break. Destroy the pulpit, destroy the family, indoctrinate the kids, change history to what you want it to say. Okay? That's why they've taken over the school systems. That's why the, the homo thing. And it's the homo is just the pimple on the top of a butt. Okay? The homosexuality is nothing because a man who's a fag is not going to be able to fight. Because he's going to act like a girl. He's not going to be grown up in... The proud to be a man, proud boys, okay? We're proud to be Jews. We're proud to be like the Maccabees. Don't push us or we're going to wallop you because there's a time for love and a time for war. You're listening to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. We're going to be right back after this commercial message. This is the Shalom Ranger with WTRC Radio. We'll be right back after a short commercial break with more news, true news, that is really happening around the world. Remember, in everything you do, praise Adonai. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. Welcome back to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. You're listening to SH228, Pearls Before Swine. I'm your host for the show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinneran from Beth Boy Messianic Congregation. Our website is bgmctv.org bgmctv.org we have a YouTube channel two YouTube channels, one in English, one in Spanish La Casa de las Naciones Beth Goim in Spanish check us out, come to visit us on the Shabbat, we meet on the Lord's Day of the Shabbat, let's get back to the topic Matthew 7 verse 6 do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine let's just pause there, there are points where we just can't talk with people anymore. Just got them. You're going to go with your minion Satan. We're going to go with ours. Now, we were talking about the Tocqueville and Cadbury before the break. 
Okay, now we're going to go to prepare for a summer raid as progressive leaders urge followers to rise up. Okay, this is the Nazi party. They're calling us Nazis, but that's like, you're fat and you're ugly. Yeah, and what does that have to do with the score of the football game? Okay, um, and somebody who's fat and ugly is Michael Moore and Bill Maher. Well, he's not fat, and he's not, well, I don't know if he's ugly or not, but he's, Michael Moore is certainly fat and ugly. But on their show, and I don't watch their show, I watched a clip of it, you know, they were urging progressives to start a civil war. Antifa thugs are throwing violently clashes with pro-Trump conservatives, okay, gathered for prayer rally in the streets of Port Lone, Oregon. Okay, now let's go through this. Study. Everybody who's going to go to a rally, I want you to get this book or go to Amazon and get it on audiobook. Study this. You do not send all your military into the fight. Okay, study the Bible. King David had a troop lay in wait and he brought the troops out. Okay, he drew, drew the army out of the city that was well defended. And when all the army went out to chase, David's army, he had some men go into the city and destroy the city. Okay, what is happening with these Antifa rallies is that if the police chief, and it's illegal, but we're in a country that's in a death spiral, okay? Um, what happens is they'll have a permit to do a peaceful protest on the Christian side. But then the Antifa people come and they, the police will take away our weapons Okay, sticks and signs and everything like that. Leave us defenseless. Okay, so now the Antifa people come and they're, they're throwing bottles, bricks. They got weapons and things like that. You leave a team of people behind. So when the war starts, you go, you go this. So you're you're this way and this way. Okay, you have your team behind. You're the good you're the good one on the right, and the bad guys are on the left. Okay, so, so the police have taken all the good, all the weapons away from the good guys. Okay, okay, so you leave about 30 to 50 people behind in your cars with radios. Get the Balfun radios, get your shortwave radio license, get the, the, because when the bad guys come, you send a team behind them or from the side and you hit them in two directions. Okay. <clears throat> Because the Nazis are rising up. The summer of rage of progressive leaders urge the followers to rise up. So here, Rav Will, you have Bill Maher, Michael Moore, you know, saying rise up. Um, you got this guy, Raphael, whatever his first name is, Pac-Man. I mean, he clocked this one Antifa guy. One, train yourselves. Work out. Learn defense fighting. Learn how to fight properly. No, 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 you learn how to hit the person. And when you hit, hit them hard. Don't hit hit them to knock them into next Tuesday. Okay? Bradwell, what do you think about this? You know, the this uh, study of the art of war, study of history, because it's coming. It's coming exactly what, what we looked at in 1934 is happening. And you know what's so interesting, Bradwell? It's the guy who was there in 1934. George Soros, and Martin's reading his boss's book. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Uh, Soros was definitely, he had a Nazi protector. Uh, his Nazi protector was one of the guys that supposedly went through all the Jewish people's property after they had been taken away on vacation. And they sorted through for all the valuables. Soros told uh, 60 Minutes that it was the, the greatest time of his life. So that's the kind of scum you're up against. So anyway, uh, yeah, these Antifa guys, they, they don't have much of a chance on a level playing field. Um, and all those were good suggestions uh, uh, that you made. Another another good suggestion, one thing that we always did 
and the reason we never had any problem with our demonstrations is because we didn't go to places where we couldn't be armed. Uh, if you can't have your firearms on a college campus or you can't have your firearms in a certain park, just don't do your demonstration there. We always did our demonstrations, which we didn't do a lot of demonstrations. We did monthly meetings. We always did our meetings and gatherings at venues where we were allowed to be armed with our guns. And if it was if it was not legal for the police to disarm you, man, there was never any Antifa protest because they're just absolutely not going to come out where they're where they're going to have to face 50 tea partiers with guns so uh that's that's one way to shut it down but as far as michael moore and bill maher i'd love to see those guys like out on the street trying to rise up that'd be funny wouldn't it michael moore if he ran around and tried to throw something that guy, he looks like he could have a liver episode any minute. <laughs> so, but anyway, if you're going to gather, if you're going to do your gathering anywhere, just just select a place where you can be armed, and and don't uh, don't do it as a parade where where these little bought and paid for police chiefs that work for these little progressive towns can be ordered to disarm you and stand by and watch while people assault you. What do you think about this one there, Ravid? What do you think about, you know, us getting disarmed, but the police, you know, I mean, the Proud Boys did a pretty good job when I saw the video, but you got to be trained. And what about, you know, what's going on? Is it a parallel to what we saw in the 1934? No, oh, definitely is is what what is coming back again. Everything, uh, and like like I said, if if we don't also uh, understand the law, you know, we you know cops or anyone can come and take the guns away. But if we educate ourselves with uh, with what and what we have to, um, you know, the support that we have. With the amendments and everything, we should be able to do it. And and as the whole show, we we're talking about um, to to train our kids. We have to from from little. We have to train. One thing I, I like from the south is either from the little ones they know how to shoot. You know, <laughs> and and and. But like I said, this is a problem that we eventually is gonna be a scare. Eventually, it's gonna be a really bad that a lot it's gonna it's gonna be a big destruction it's gonna be a you know it's it's, it's prophetic all this um case that is is coming basically really fast and hopefully we can push back a little bit you know as we always said prophecy is is there but we always can push back a little bit if we do our our job. We have to be let the people know, and and I like the 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 the, the question that, that you said. But what happened when you tell the people and they just don't want to hear? They turn around. Well, I get I guess that's when when the twenty five percent start to take place. The remnant, God will guide His people. He will protect for that 20, that 25 percent remember it has to be a big catastrophe a, a huge huge uh problem and we have to be ready yeah we have to be ready but like you know the the, the biggest issue is this is without what we see here in Mich michelle uh, 2918 proverbs 2918 without a prophetic vision People throw off all restraint, but he who keeps Torah is happy. Okay? The prophetic vision is not like, Ashala Walla Bing Bang, and you're going to have a million dollars. The prophetic vision, when you study the Hebrew of the prophetic vision, is an oracle from the Lord. It is the Torah. Okay? Once you lose that vision, 
then, you know, so what did Tatofel say? America's good because America's pulpit is good. Now that we have so many denominations, 1,500 over the Christian things, and Messiah Yeshua is still a Jew, never stop being a Jew, so come back to Torah, okay? So once the children don't honor mother and father because they don't know who their father is, okay? There was another news article today about the pedophiles don't want to be called pedophiles on it anymore. They want to have a whole new thing. See, without a prophetic vision, once you open up the homosexual can, you know, Bruce Jenner wants to be Caitlin, idiot, moron, stupid person, okay? Well, maybe the Kardashians is what they hit you want to be a girl. Um, they're another group, but, I mean, they're all about sexuality. They're all about look at me. When God is, God is all about him, and that's what we were designed to be. We're supposed to be worshipers of him. Well, that's narcissistic. Well, anybody, any of you, can you make a universe by speaking it? You can't even get off this planet, okay? You can't stay up in space for too long. There's problems when we come back down, okay? We've got not gotten to Mars, okay? We've not gotten to another planet, okay? So why do we have this, this next story? Then I'll bring Martin on. Without a prophetic vision, the people... Drop all restraint. Let's move my mouse here. If we are Nazis, expect more violence. The left escalating rhetoric has only one objective. Because the ever descending moral and intellectual state of the mainstream news media, there has been no outcry against the leftists. Call President Donald Trump and all Americans who support him Nazis. It's so interesting. I mean, I imagine if you would even ask somebody from the left. Who was the Nazi party? What did they do? You know, you got the, the, the young idiots wearing a Che, che Rivera shirt. I don't even know if I said the guy's name right. Um, che Guevara. Che Guevara. Che Guevara. Sounds more Italian. Che Guevara. Okay? The guy was a murderer. Uh, and I then. Got one word for you on Che Guevara Bolivia. Okay? So here they're calling us it when actually they are the ones, okay? But when you don't have the prophetic vision, Martin, when you lose the pulpit, you lose the family because mom and dad are sleeping with, looking for Mr. Goodbar. He's, a, he's living at the YMCA. They're divorced. It's all about me. It's all about sexuality. I got to find me in the 60s and the 70s. You know, it's all about, you know, what Bill Cosby was going through with the Playboy Mansion. Okay? It's all about that. Once you lose the vision, this is why Beth Coin is 100% legalistic. Because once you remove 20 of the laws, 30 of the laws, this and that, once you remove the foundation, this is what you get. Because you don't study history. It's a spiritual battle. This is what the Joneses don't understand. This is what Shapiro doesn't understand. This is what certainly Andrew Clavin does not understand as a Methodist or whatever, an Episcopalian, whatever the hell he is. He's a Jew that knows Jesus, but he doesn't know his own Messiah, Yeshua. It's a different understanding. Once you remove God from the schools, removing prayer, and, oh, no, and the new chief judge they're going to take abortion. Well, why is it okay to murder the kid when he's inside the mother but it's not okay to murder the teenager when they wrecked your car. Okay? Let's just go there. You want to run this out? Let's get stupid on you. Okay? My wife didn't cook me dinner. Why can't I murder dinner right? Why can't I murder her? Well, it's wrong. Well, you just murdered the, the poor defenseless baby because the baby was in the womb and you didn't want it. I didn't want broccoli for dinner, so I threw it at my wife and I had to kill her. Okay? Why is it okay to murder the child in the womb? And, you know, if you don't want to have a baby, don't have sex. Okay? Don't have sex. And then the Christians are saying, you know, having sex, but using contraceptive. You understand, Christian women, that every time you take the pill, 
you get an abortion each month because the pill gives you an abortion. Okay? So if you don't want to have a baby, don't have sex. Okay? But now without a prophetic vision, once you destroy the pulpit, once you destroy the family, once you destroy the school system, then, oh, let's just try to talk to them. Time for talking is done. What do you think there, Martin? That's definitely true. That's so true. I mean, the church became a social, social uh, party, a club. It's a club. People go to church because it's a club. You know, they don't go to listen for the word of God. Um, listen, last week, I pick up people on, on this parking ride that I bring to New York, to the train, in this church. Uh, I think it's a Methodist, Met Methodist church, Methodist, yeah. Huge uh, building, parking lot. That's why we go in there in the bus. Condoms in the parking lot of the church. People having sex in the parking lot of the church. They lost it. They, it's 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 declined totally. I mean, the church. It's I I will say to the people, get out the church. The people, the good people who who still have a little of the light, get out of the church. Not only I don't mean that particular group, the whole church as a whole, get out of there. So that's what's going on, and it's going to happen. They, 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 they switch the, the, the story around. They they uh, telling us that we are the leftists. They telling us that we are the uh, uh, the Nazis. So they turn the history around. Why? Because there's nobody to tell a lesson. You're wrong. You are wrong. And not to be afraid to tell them. That's the only way we can fight this thing, this war. I mean, not to be afraid and and tell the the, the, the pastors and, and don't be afraid. No, well, I mean, well, I mean, you say you know that replacement theology. What about, talk about play, replacement theology? That's a big problem. They replace Israel. They replace the Torah with the New Testament. They, 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 it's a whole mess up there really um and, and and all those doctrines that have been in the people's head for years and many centuries and and now we got this idiot pope from the catholic church that he said two days ago that uh about abortion and the and then believe me it's a, it's a mess it's a mess all we have to, for us is to be ready ready for the fight with guns or without guns, God is going to be with us. He's going to protect us. God is going to, uh, listen, I was reading this beautiful uh, psalm of David. He says, blessed be Adonai, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my love and kindness, my fortress, my strong tower, and my deliverer, my shield, in whom I take refuge. He is our protector, but we also are ready. <laughs> so we're not afraid we're not afraid we're gonna go all the way for our lord because he's he died for our sins i mean what else do we want he he spilled his beautiful blood his heavenly blood for for these dogs they they, they take it for granted like you know they don't care i do care you guys care we all care in that way that's why we talk the way we talk, because we saying truth. We sound the shofar. We let you know that you're gonna you're gonna perish in hell. But see, when I talk to uh the Christians at my work like this, they all stay quiet because the their ears it's a new thing for some of these people. They don't. They, they were like, "What? This guy? He's crazy, you know. He's a Nazi. He's a. He's a liberal, or you know, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I go all the way for my Lord, because Torah. That's what it teaches us to be like this, straightforward.
And for those who freaked out that Martin showed a gun and Red Bull showed a gun, they're both NRA carrying card members. And they have their concealed carry permit and the regular outside. The states that they're, they live in have open carry. <laughs> open carry. Because when everybody's got a gun, makes the playing field level. Okay? Let, now, Martin brought up the Pope. I, I haven't heard what the Pope said, but probably something stupid. But... <clears throat> Then again, most Christians are pretty stupid. And sadly enough, many Messianics are stupid. This is why Rav Shaul wrote this, this thing to Timoth Timotheus. 2 Timothy 4.3, the time is coming when people have no, no patience for sound teaching. But will cater to their passion to gather around them and teach to say whatever their ears itch to hear. This is going to be our last story for tonight. For this Sledgehammer Show, number 228. If you like the show, donate. Go to our website, BGMC TV. Dot org and hit the donate button. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button. Okay, you're watching this on Periscope, hit the like button or the love. I think it's the love button. Okay, now let me just move my mouse over here to get to the PowerPoint. And now this is one stupid Christian. You know, let's put Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in a cage. See, Steve Carlson says the Holy Scripture. It's clear about how we're to treat people trying to find safety for their families and how we're to show mercy. Um, is Mexico that bad that people are leaving? Or are they just coming to America to be illegal because our economy is good, because President Trump is doing a great job in the economy? Okay. Are they leaving because there's gang warfare? Okay. Well, then why don't they... Go to the police and tell them to get rid of the gang. Okay? So this is a this is one dumb, moronic, idiotic Christian. Okay? Um, let's just say the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, as you call them there, Mr. Carlson. The word border appears in the Holy Scriptures 125 times. Okay? Now, if you're going to put the people in the cage like this, we're going to stop World Cup, okay? Because I don't want anybody rooting for Mexico. Not that they're going to win the World Cup anyway. And here's how I watch World Cup. Okay? Um, you can't root for your, your own country because there's no borders. No more World Cup. No more Yankees because we can't have teams. Okay? You're just a jack wagon. Okay? If you think that we don't need borders, God said these are the borders, okay? Now, he gave us the land of Israel, and it's supposed to be a lot bigger, okay? So here, what do you think about this one there, Rab? Well, go around the board and then have your last two shekels. Yeah, the Lord gave us borders clearly. So anybody that does not respect the borders of any nation, the Lord set all the nation's borders, not just Israel's. He said every nation's borders. So anyone that doesn't respect those borders is not disrespecting that nation only. They're disrespecting God. So that's, that's just the end of that story because you disrespect the one who set the border and that's God. Now, in my opinion, we wouldn't need a border wall if uh, they would just stop the welfare state, turn off the valve of free stuff, because that's people figure out they can get free stuff, and man, they're all in for that. So that's that's the issue. But that pastor, he's. It was a publicity stunt for his church, I suppose, and I suppose it worked. But he, if he's going to quote scripture, he needs to understand scripture. Foreigners were non-citizens were inside Israel because every person who followed God was required to appear at the temple three times a year. So... 
they would have to be inside the country whether they were citizens or not. So we don't have that temple in the United States. There's no reason for a non-citizen to be walking across the border. The whole premise is a lie in the first place. Most of these groups of people that show up and say, oh, we're family, are not. Uh, there are people sending children alone I read a report that said they they send if they send a young girl they go on and they they give her uh, a morning after abortion pill because they know she'll be victimized on the trip and these are 12 13 year old girls and what kind of parent does that so from my perspective the people who catch these people and hold them and try to figure out who they really are are the ones who care about them. The ones who send them across the desert with the coyotes couldn't possibly care about them. We have Ed, your last two shekels. I, th <laughs> I think as, uh, <clears throat> as we were saying, what they going to teach if they don't know what to teach they have to you know they have to be trained and taught and and also um i think that you know we know the lord is is a is just you know his his compassion i think that's why he 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 mentioned a lot of borders in the in the bible because he knew the World Cup is gonna be playing, you know. So, <laughs> so there, therefore, there is a borders. You need to have borders. Yeah. So now it's, it's you know, basically these uh, this shows hopefully hopefully is um, is a lot make people think that you cannot fail fail on your job. You have to defend what you believe. You cannot put out all that you cannot put up with that with that crap that is outside i'm sorry with, with these words with a lot of garbage outside with the people that they, they just want to feel feel better what about those the welfare i i, I agree with that with the people who really need it but either veterans from they came back from war in vietnam many other places they don't have the whole coverage in medical or anything but what about people is uh, they sucking up the welfare system and that is not right definitely it's not right what what they're doing so if we start from there we can close many things for for them to be able if they don't have nothing of that i don't think they they don't even come here <laughs> you know what they want is just to have everything free that is not the what the lord says yeshua says he leave the corners of the field for you to go and pick it up, do some work to eat. Leave the corners of the field for you to eat. Yeah, I think you made a great point there, Revan. I think every one of our veterans should get the top-notch health care first. No foreigner, no, we'll give you bread, bread and water or rice. Rice and water, and that's that. And, and if you've got to get put in a cage, you've got to get put in a cage. Martin, they're coming out of your country, your former country, Mexico, that has a Jewish mayor of Mexico City. That's pretty interesting. It's, it's things happening in Mexico. Um, uh, today, uh, the, this, the new guy that is going to take power in December, he, he says that he's going to... Uh, uh, He's actually he's what he's doing is he's putting together a new group of immigration in the south from preventing people to start coming in from Guatemala this way. So I guess the guy is you know he's getting it, but um, back to the point it's that uh, uh, God set up borders for a reason and it's completely legal to have borders for protection and for everything else and all those who come across the border illegally they're breaking the law 
But since the pulpit is teaching that love your neighbor as yourself, love your God with all your, your heart and strength, and, and all the love is based on these two. So welcome, break the law, come. But it's wrong. It's wrong because it's just the beginning of, a, of our walk before the Lord. Love our God and love our neighbors. Then we have to keep all God's commandments and statutes. If we read, all the Christians read the law of God, we will save a lot of stress to the government and politicians and to ourselves. Because, you know, like Rob Will was mentioning, a lot of people, is you know, they, they die because they try to cross uh, the border, but not only the border, but when they come to, to Mexico, there's a lot of bad people over there. They end up dead and raped. So, got to go back to the, to the main point of everything. It's God's law. We are legalistic. And yes, we are. We are under the law. That's, that's God's eternal uh, purpose, the people, you know, that we love him with all our heart and strength. And, and, and the law is for ourselves to have a long life, to keep us from mistakes, from keep us from other uh, satanic things and, and, and keep us holy before the Lord. So I encourage all the uh, several pastors and Christians to open your eye and search the scriptures with all your heart and your mind and strength. With, with a really willing heart. And, and, and be honest to yourselves, Christians, be honest. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. We don't have a new religion. Yeshua is Jewish. He died Jewish. And he's going to come back as Jewish, as Jew, to give us eternal life in heaven. So, doors open still. Let's, let's respect the law, our eternal, the, our early law, and we'll be happy. Let's go on that. Oh, leave the door open. Okay, so if that pastor wants to be so open, don't lock the church door. Leave it open. Leave it open. Okay, don't ever lock it. Your border is your door. Okay, so leave your car open. Don't lock your car. Okay, you see how simple one can tear down the argument. But we're living in some, I think, the death spiral of America. I really do think we're living in the end of days. And the reason is because we're really, you got the brown shirts, study Nazi Germany, you had the brown shirts, and then the the SS, okay? And that's just one. The Romans did the same thing. Napoleon did the same thing. The Brits did the same thing, okay? The sun never set on the British Empire, okay? Do you think they just said, oh, let's come in here. Would you guys like a spot of tea? We really make some real good Earl Grey tea. And you want a little crumpet? You sit down and have some tea and crumpets, and I'm sure we can talk this over, you savages from Africa, okay, or India, okay? But when you have revisionist history, when you have replacement theology, when you don't study history, you're doomed to repeat it, and it's going to be painful, okay? This is why God gave us the Bible. It's his story. And this is why Beth Goyim teaches we got to follow the laws of God. And it's not going to be easy. Okay? No, I'm not going to. She was said, a burden's like, give me your, your burden, I'll, I'll help you. I'm not going to let you get over easy, but I'm going to help you do it. Because you can do all things through Yeshua who strengthens you. But we're heading for war because we really can't talk to the bad people. So learn. The art of war and learn the real art of war. 
the Bible. Because times are going to get very, very tough. You've been listening to the Remnants Call the Sledgehammer Show. I'm going to do a shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, 
you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.